How about that Breeders' Cup Classic, huh? You know, for years, horse racing has been desperate to duplicate the success of NASCAR. So now we have jockeys bumping into each other, they're causing collisions and stuff, and people still aren't satisfied. <laughs> horse racing has to capitalize on these situations. We need to teach riders how to confront each other after races, threatening to fight, screaming in funny southern accents, just like they do in NASCAR. And we have the perfect man for the job. Calvin Burrell, come on down. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by Lenny's place. You know, whenever we have an issue come up these days, like we did in the Breeders' Cup Classic, it seems we have to debunk idiotic conspiracy theories before we can have an intelligent conversation. So for all the people who think Bob Baffert ordered his jockey to veer inside, coming out of the gate, or the people who think Martin Garcia did that on purpose, please tune out now and Go look for President Obama's birth certificate. Okay, now, for those of us who are left, the people who think the steward's decision will lead to jockeys increasingly trying to bump their horse into the horse next to them leaving the gate, let me ask you this. Do you think jockeys don't see their peers falling off horses and getting injured, falling off horses and becoming paralyzed, falling off horses and dying? Do you really think they're going to do something deliberately that causes that kind of accident? Do you? Okay, now on to the quasi-intellectual portion of the show. Let's face it, the stewards were in a damned if they do, damned if they don't situation. The shame in all this, of course, is that shared belief was compromised, didn't get to run his race, and that's tough for an undefeated horse, and also for the people who wagered on him. But do you really want to take down every horse that comes over and makes contact with another? How loud would you be screaming when your horse wins by 10 lengths and comes down because he bumped another horse leaving the gate or at the 16th pole? No human being on this planet knows where shared belief would have finished if he hadn't been slammed into by Bayern and then by Toast of New York. But do you want the stewards to make that determination or would you rather let the race play out? And how many races start with horses coming over on one another? I'd say like every single one. And how many times are horses DQ'd for it? I'd say like never. Do you want to make an exception because it's the Breeders' Cup Classic? Or because the favorite was involved? Or because it was a Bob Baffert horse? You know, if the stewards wanted to be heroes and take the easy way out, they could have DQ'd the first two and put up California Chrome. He was the most popular horse on the track that day. And for those of you who think they didn't do anything because of Baffert, well, you think Jerry Hollendorfer would have been happy getting moved up to second as part owner as well as the trainer? You think that extra few hundred thousand meant something to him? He runs more horses in California than Baffert does. Look, the stewards had a very tough decision and agree or disagree with it. They followed the rules under which they work. Santa Anita did another fine job putting on the Breeders' Cup, which is causing a lot of people to panic over what will happen at Keeneland next year. Yes, it's going to be different, and yes, we could have some weather. But at least we won't have Breeders' Cup officials claiming that 37,000 people showed up for the Friday card. Hey, guys. Stop counting eyeballs and start counting people. You'll be far more accurate that way. Hey, did you see where Churchill Downs is putting in new seats for derby owners down near the finish line? Here's the official artist's rendering of it. Why are all the women in this drawing a foot taller than their guys? And is that how people react when derby horses are thundering down toward the finish line? Well, anyway, good for Churchill. Can a handicapped parking spot for Ron Turcott be far behind? How's this for a segue? What owner of a recent Kentucky Derby winner with Entourage crashed the Turf Riders dinner last week? And by crashed, I mean attended a charity event without paying. 
and refused to move from the table that was paid for by a popular horse racing magazine. Showing a lot of class, all of it low. Chad Brown is becoming a regular drop-in here at Lenny's Place, and why not? He visited with us just before the Breeders' Cup and then went out and won three races. Chad, is this not the luckiest place on earth? Lenny's Place is the only place on earth, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, you did pretty darn well after we almost went through the bottom of that tack box, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was good luck, man. You just have to have a few bloopers for the, you know, for the real end when you're rolling the credits when we're done. So. Hey, Chad, the Breeders' Cup is such a fast-paced couple of days, and it's one, one spectacular race after another. What did it feel like to keep leading over, you know, winners over there? You know, that must have been quite, quite a time. You know, it's just, like you said, it moves so fast that um, it's just so exciting. And, but you don't really have that much time to soak it all in because you have another horse to bring up, in our case. so. But uh, unbelievable weekend, one we'll never forget, me and my staff and my clients and family and, and everything. So but now that we're um, home and, and, and reflecting, it's like, man, I wish we could get all, you know, do it all again this weekend. Well, you, you might be able to do it all again with Lady Eli. I mean, she, having having sat there and watched those two days, I mean, her turn of foot was second to none uh, over the Breeders' Cup uh, two days. Is she uh, is she a star ready to ready to come on now? Yeah, she's a pretty special horse, and uh, we're going to give her some downtime now and point her towards next year. But just. You know, a flawless two-year-old campaign for her. Three for threes, did nothing wrong, has an impressive turn of foot that you, know, you just dream about a horse having, and we're lucky to have her. We talked about Bobby's kitten last time and how he was unrateable <laughs> and needed the lead, and then he ends up making the last run from out in Pasadena somewhere to win the turf <laughs> sprint. But, but I want you to talk about, we, we talked about this off-camera last time, but... Uh, Talk about the fact that this horse, who he's named for, and how you came to run out of Barn 48 at that particular Breeders' Cup. Well, you know, Bobby's Kitten's named for my mentor, Bobby Frankel, and, uh, you know, to, um, to return to Santa Anita, where, where I did a lot of learning from Bobby, and to run you know, over that track and get a redo from last year when I thought that a Breeders' Cup win got away from him. Um, it's really special that he got it done this time. And Barn 48 was our barn, Frankel's barn when I worked for him. And last year we weren't in there. This year we were, uh, Jerry Hallendorf was nice enough to let me in there with my horses. And it proved to be the good luck we needed. Yeah, that's, that's something else to run out of that barn with a, with a horse name for him. <laughs> that was incredible. Your other great race, of course, was the Chad Exacta of Day at the Spa and Stephanie's Kitten. Uh, we know the winner has been sold. Uh, has there been any word from uh, the Ramsey camp whether Stephanie's kitten may come back for another season with you? She's, she's supposed to come back for another season. She's supposed to rejoin me here shortly in South Florida and um, take her time and map out another campaign for next year. So we're, we're lucky to at least have one of them back. And um, you know, Dave's Spa was bought by terrific owners in Stone Street Stables and Barbara Banky, and hopefully um, she goes on to have a great career as a broodmare, um, and it's all ended up good for both Phillies. It's a heck of a deal to, to hit an exact, isn't it? Oh, it is unbelievable. Uh, but both, it's too bad there had to be a loser, really, because I think both mares ran incredible. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't ask for more from each of them. Either. Well, you, you've had an incredible year, an incredible Breeders' Cup, three on the card, and... Uh, I hope we get together next time at Keeneland, and uh, you, you'll drop in again when, when you need a little dose of luck. Well, you're not going to just have me on once a year on Lenny's Place, are you? i got to wait all the way to Keeneland? <laughs> hey, yeah, I mean, yeah. Come on, man. We have to have the Saratoga edition. <laughs> hey, you're, you're the first back-to-back -back guest here. What, are you kidding me? Come on. Anytime. All right, man. You know how to get old of me. All right, Chad. Thanks a lot. Continue good luck to you. Thanks. Take care, buddy. All right. Take care. That's trainer Chad Brown, an unbelievable Breeders' Cup, three winners, uh, at least one second, maybe another one. I forgot there were so many of them on the card. Fantastic uh, training feat for Chad Brown. All right.
We want to thank our viewers. We want to thank our sponsor, Darby Dan Farm. We want to thank our first back-to-back -back guest, Chad Brown, here at Lenny's Place. Uh, wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. We're going to take a three-week break now, come back at you in the uh, first week in December. So we'll see you back then, and uh, thanks for dropping by Lenny's Place.